You know, I understand what you're saying, Dr. Maurice. Okay, the, the, the recidivism rate is very high in the auto industry. Okay, <laughs> if that's your point, I've served in Congress. This is my 33rd year, sitting on the very same committee, the Energy Committee. Okay, so I am aware. I have. I'm actually an eyewitness to each one of the hearings that has been held on the subject for 33 years. So I don't think anyone else in the room, with the exception of Ms. Claybrook, can say that. Okay, so that gives me, you know, a perspective that understands that I could very much look like Charlie Brown with Lucy pulling the football. But that's why you need a law, okay? You don't need a promise. That's her point. And you're helping us to say, let's turn the, the promise into legislative language that we then attach. And we might not do it this round, but they're coming back again real soon, okay? <laughs> that, I, no, I, again, I, I've watched over and over and over again, okay? The law actually called for- kid with an allowance. <laughs> you need to attach conditions. That's what we're talking about. And then that give, I think that empowers, Dr. Morisi, the technologists in the companies. That empowers the younger generation. That empowers uh, the people who thus far have been walled out by the people who went to Harvard Business School. And by the way, I love Harvard Business School. I love the Sloan School up in my district. I love them. They're great people. I prefer Don't you though, love the Maryland yeah. Business School. I would. Excuse me. Don't you love the Maryland, the University of Maryland? I love the School? University of Maryland. I want to make sure you get that in. But each one of them pretty much gets a three by five card that shows you how you make money. Okay. We're trying to empower the people who go to MIT or to the University of Maryland. Okay. That is the Google boy's father over here uh, at the University of Maryland, uh, who is not in the financial sector, but over here in the technological sector. Okay. Uh, Sergey Brin's father and. You know, and say to the technological people at the University of Maryland, or at MIT, or at Harvard, now you're in control, you know, because they're going to have to talk to you, the people over at the B School or the Sloan School, huh? as to what you're going to have to now talk about in terms of improving the technology, right? Right now, they just straight on them. They're out of the room. We're not listening to you, you know? We don't have to improve anything, okay? So that's really what we're talking about, right? How do we create a formula that accomplishes that goal? So. Uh, so my, you know, my, my, you know, my goal here is just to find a way of holding them to what they're saying right now they're going to do, do like an allowance, okay? There's got to be some penalty. There's got to be something you're going to take away. You're grounded, huh? If you, if, you know, if you don't perform on the allowance, okay, you're grounded for two weeks, and then you have to make it stick, right? So we need to find a way of doing that. Um, when, we, uh, when we move... Uh, 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 forward, you know, we just have to accomplish that goal. I'm just going to ask one uh, more uh, quick question right now, uh, and that is that uh, uh, that uh, uh, Dr. Marisi, you proposed that uh, when we provide the assistance to the companies, that they perform the R&D and their first large production runs in the United States. Uh, the condition would be that beneficiaries share their patents at reasonable cost with other companies uh, who, will be who will be here in the United States making uh, vehicles. You suggest that this uh, could attract um, producers from around the world and rejuvenate the U.S. auto supply chain. Do you think that people would continue to develop these new technologies if the large profit margin disappeared? Uh, and, um, and I'd like you to just answer that question so that we don't kind of create something that actually doesn't attract anyone to well, uh, that, that fund. That the reasonable has to be reasonable. If you come up with a great idea and it's worth something, the other car companies can have access to it, but they have to pay for it as well. So that, and that worked in Japan. It worked just fine. That's what they did in the 70s and 80s with their technology program. If we require that Americans drive vehicles with high mileage standards and we provide R&D incentives to develop the products here, I don't think we're going to have much trouble getting The reason why I want to do that is I want to get Toyota, Nissan, and Honda involved because we want access to their technology. We want to encourage them to locate more of what they do here. Okay, and, and, and one of the suggestions on the panel was that um, these factories that General Motors and Ford and Chrysler have right now that they might not be using in the future uh, might be made available. I think I heard someone say that to people like Mr. Munger and, and others, mm -hmm. okay? Um, uh, so that it just doesn't get shut down, but we move it over to the new companies moving in. Was that you, uh, Mr. Wardle? Somebody made that proposal. Yes, I, I certainly believe. So talk about that concept in the, in, the, in the context of Mr. Munger and Tesla and these other new companies. 
The, um, there is no doubt that, they, that these new companies have already worked out the products that we need. And uh, at the same time, the uh, legacy auto industry certainly has a lot of uh, expertise and capability of turning products into uh, high volume manufactured uh, vehicles. And so I think uh, it would be a, a missed opportunity if some way was not found of harnessing those idle uh, capabilities in the legacy industry to the benefit of the startup companies. So long as none of the um, defensive attitudes, if you like, of the legacy industry uh, would dilute in any way the innovation of the startup companies. So it has to be uh, the right relationship so that the best parts of the current auto industry are made available to the most innovative aspects of uh, entrepreneurial startup companies. Okay, great. And I'll just give you the, the, the quote from uh, the White House press spokesperson, uh, Perino, today, as, as opposed to building the kind of the promise of the industry into uh, the law. Uh, she said, quote, today, if the viability advisor says that they're not making progress, then that company, the automaker, would have to pay the taxpayer back right away. So there's the incentive for everybody to work hard to uh, make this work. Good enough for you, Ms. Claybrook? No. Good enough for you, Mr. Munger? It's not obvious how you repay a loan when it's a loan you require. Uh, Dr. Marisi, good enough for you? No, it's not good enough for me. I want more. Okay, thank you. Mr. Waddle, good enough for you? No. No? No. Thank you, Mr. Kerr. Mr. Curls was shaking his head vigorously uh, sideways uh, uh, so that you know what his answer was.